Hi folks, Derek here with another video I promised I wouldn't make. Over the course of the last month, I've spent a lot of time upgrading both the hardware and the software in my work from home environment. So in this video, I'd like to share my top five picks for ways you can improve your home office experience. Stay tuned. Okay, my first recommendation for you guys is actually a pretty simple one. You may recall just a couple short years ago a steep rise in video conferencing. No idea why. Back then it was nearly impossible to get even one of these. My first recommendation? Add a second web camera to your environment. Doing so dynamically changes the way you run your meetings and your presentations. We've all gotten pretty comfortable with our desktop camera or our notebook camera. But again, just having that second perspective, make sure that your meetings and your presentations, whether for school or for work, are the ones that people walk away remembering. Now you may go overboard like I did and add a third or even a fourth camera. All of that's not necessary, two is plenty. Camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. You may remember when I mentioned earlier that it was nearly impossible to get one of these cameras I happen to have the inside scoop on a brand new 4K camera. You can find it in the description below. Now I know what you're thinking. Derek, I've got the extra cameras, but how am I going to manage all this during my meetings? It's actually pretty simple. There's a free software tool available online called OBS Studio that makes this process incredibly simple for you. Now if you happen to be running an RTX graphics card, you can take it even one step further and use NVIDIA broadcast software with that RTX card. That makes your broadcasts even more powerful using artificial intelligence capabilities of those graphics cards. I'll provide links to both of those in the description below as well. So again, my first recommendation, add a second web camera. Try it out today. That's right. My next recommendation is just to get a wireless headset. Outside of the obvious benefit of being more mobile while you're on your calls, there's one additional software setting that you can use to make your work from home life a lot easier. The first thing you have to do though is make sure that the wireless headset you pick is certified for the video conferencing solution you're using. This headset is certified for both Zoom and Teams and would make a great solution for you. So the first thing we need to do is actually check our software settings. Let's do that now. So I'm demonstrating this in Teams, but your settings should be very similar in Zoom or most other video conferencing software. The first thing you want to check is to make sure that your wireless headset is actually managing your calls. But if that's the only setting you change, that means your calls will only ring through to your headset, which means by extension, you must be wearing your headset. The additional setting that we want to check is actually under Devices. You scroll down just a little bit and look for this secondary ringer option. You want a secondary ringer via your PC speaker, or if your display happens to have speakers like mine does, something like that. Let me show you how that works. If someone were to call me, it'll ring on my secondary ringer, so I know there's a calling coming. Then all I have to do is pick up my headset put it on, and it answers the call for me. Isn't it funny? You hear a phone ring, and it could be anybody. But a ringing phone has to be answered, doesn't it? Well, not really these days. I probably ignore more calls than I answer. But at any rate, recommendation number two, get a wireless headset that is video conference certified. Now I'm no longer tethered to my desk, but I'm also not tethered to my headset. Yeah, this next trick has to do with the settings you're using for your displays. This is one simple change that has increased my productivity greatly. You may be able to do it with the monitors you already have. You've probably noticed that I've got a large number of displays behind me. Before we moved to work from home, I had this 38 inch at the office and I had these two 24s at home. This meant that my workflows could be identical regardless of which location I was working at. Now that we're at home, 
I'm not going to not use those additional displays, so I put them to good use like this. Now the first thing we need to do before we get started is make sure that your displays are actually capable of rotation. I'll put a link to the P-Series and U-Series displays in the description below. Above me here, you can see how I have my displays oriented, two of which are in portrait mode. Doing so allows me to have that much more vertical space and a dedicated window for my collaboration tools and my web browsing tools, making my workflows that much simpler. The setting up that orientation is actually pretty simple. Just go into display settings, select the display you'd like to orient, and change it from landscape to portrait. And that's it for tip number three. Try out portrait mode, see if you like it. But the more windows you have, the more you have to drag things around, right? Nope, what do you see what's next? Okay, so this next tip is only slightly harder than all the ones I've mentioned so far. It doesn't require purchasing any additional equipment, but it may require you to get administrative privileges if you're working on a corporate machine. Let's take a look at my setup again. Okay, to recap, you're looking at all three of my displays here. Both of my 24s are in portrait mode off to the side, and my one big 38 inch is right above me here. You might have noticed that the 38 inch is cut right down the middle. I'm using display management software to do that, as well as make sure that my collaboration tools always open on this display, my web browsing tools always open on this display, my email is always here, and whatever active window I happen to be working on is always here. Let's take a look at some of that display management software in a little closer detail. Now, if you happen to be using a Dell display, one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to check is if it's supported by Dell Display Manager. If you use those links I shared earlier for the P or the U series monitors, then you're definitely supported by this tool. This tool allows you to take those displays and carve them up into the sections that you want and assign them the use that you need. And as you can see, it supports both landscape and that portrait mode I recommended earlier. Once again, if you happen to be lucky enough to have an RTX graphics card in your system, I strongly encourage you to check out the NVIDIA RTX Desktop Manager. Not only does this do some of the similar functionality that I just showed with Dell Display Manager, but it also takes it to the next level so that you can assign applications to those carved out windows. You can actually assign that as your boot up sequence as well. Do you or someone you know suffer from that alt tab syndrome, constantly searching for the page that you were working on? Get more displays, get display management software. I promise you, you'll become much more productive and efficient with your workday. Now this final tip is one that I'm actually kind of embarrassed to share. It's been available for years, completely unknown to me, until someone else showed me the same way I'm about to show you. That is Outlook Today. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably manage your entire day through Outlook. You're going to your inbox, you're managing your mail, calendar, your task list, etc., all from this pane. But what if I told you there's a way to get all of this in one view? All you have to do is click on your name at the very top. As you can see in this view, I can still see my inbox. I can also see my complete calendar for the day and the next couple of days, depending on what your settings are. In the opposite corner, I can see any of the tasks that I've built for myself, and I can also see the count of the mailboxes that I'm monitoring. So that's pretty cool by itself, but you can actually set up Outlook to open directly there. To do so, you can either go to the Backstage, jump down here to Options, and go to Advanced. Right here on Outlook Start and Exit, you can have Outlook Start and Outlook Today. Now another way to do it is to click on Customize Outlook Today up there in the top corner. Doing so will take you to this settings screen where you can check the box that says go directly to Outlook today. You can choose which folders to display in that top right corner. Personally, I just use the inbox. 
Show how many days in the future you want to see in your calendar. I choose the entire work week. You can also choose how you want to view your assigned tasks. Personally, I prefer only to see the tasks that I need to execute on that same day. And then you can choose what order you'd like to see them in. And finally, you can choose the style. There's a few different ones here. I prefer this summer yellow look, but of course you can do whatever you're comfortable with. I find using this mode helps me really stay on top of my day that much better. Instead of red flagging emails or setting up new calendar invites to block off time, I'm able to stay on top of and be more productive and efficient with my time throughout the day. Give it a try. That's it folks, that's my top five recommendations. These changes, when combined, allow me to get a jump start on my day and actually take action on what's going to be impactful instead of wasting time clicking and switching between windows. If you've stuck with me this long, thanks for hanging out and let me know in the comments below what your favorite office upgrades have been. See you next time. Oh, you're still here. Okay, one more bonus tip for you, but this one is not for the faint-hearted. You do this one wrong, you either have a call going into your IT team, or you may have to completely reinstall Windows, so proceed with caution. If you're like me, you 10-key your password multiple times throughout the week, but come Monday morning you've rebooted, and that pesky NumLock key just isn't on, and you don't realize it until you've plugged in the wrong password, and you're waiting another five minutes to get that incorrect password message so you can type it in correctly. Let's fix that. Making this change involves editing the registry. Again, a risky maneuver, so proceed with caution. Jump up here to the search bar and type in regedit. Hit enter to open the registry editor. Now I've already made this change, so of course it's bringing me back to the same location it was in, but you haven't, so you'll need to navigate there. Click on H key users, default, control panel, keyboard. And the change we're making is to the keyboard initialization. Now you can either type in this long number I have here or just type in two. I'll post the link to the knowledge base document from Microsoft. It shows that either of those numbers should work. And just like that, now I don't have to remember to hit that numlock key every Monday morning. All right, that's it. I'm out. It's over. Go home. Go.